that social work is a profession one of the characteristics or aspects of a profession is to have a body a national body which takes care of the necessary guidelines for a particular profession to be practicing in a particular country in india social work education started about seven decades ago in 1936 we do have couple of associations however unlike other countries particularly developed countries the associations in india is yet to get recognition from the government of india we are yet to see a social work council just like council for uh, Uh, the hotel management council for the teacher education the bar council of india the medical council of india the nation council of india similarly we are also looking towards the establishment or a recognition of a council for social work education which will set standard and maintain the quality of uh, social work education and training in the country today we are discussing about the national association of social workers from the united states we have several experts present in the studio today to my right is dr elizabeth clark who is the executive director of national association of social work in the united states national association of social workers in the united states is perhaps the largest membership organization of professional social workers in the world having around 150000 membership dr clark is in india with a delegation under the people to people ambassador programs social work delegation which she had earlier led to china to cambodia south africa egypt russia and brazil to her right is uh, dr jean anastas she is the president of the board of directors of national association of social workers in the united states she is also a professor of uh, new york university silver school of social work to her right is dr g mahesh who is a coordinator in the center for tibetan studies which is a center established in the school of social work in indira gandhi national open university while dr mahesh would be speaking about the national association of social workers in india both dr elizabeth clark as well as dr jean anastas would be sharing about their uh, experience with the national association of social workers in the united states so to begin with let me ask dr anastas to kindly tell us the need for a national association of social workers in a particular country well the most important function that nasw in the united states serves is to advance and protect the profession of social work and we do this in a variety of ways uh one of which is to set practice standards for various fields of practice such as in healthcare or hospice probably the most important practice standard that NASW develops and distributes is our code of ethics which gives the detailed uh ethical standards of practice and professional behavior that every social worker must adhere to and when you 
apply to be a member of the National Association of Social Workers in the U.S., you must show that you have an appropriate professional degree from an accredited social work program, and you must also agree that you will practice and uh, behave as a professional according to our professional code of ethics, which is something that unifies the profession across the country. When you become a member of NASW, you become a member of both the national organization and a local, what we call chapter, that is in each state within the United States, so that you have opportunities for being active both in the national organization and locally with social workers in your own area where you might be able to meet more often face to face. The Social Work Association provides a lot of continuing education and other forms of professional development, such as publishing major journals in the field of social work that provide knowledge development for the profession. Uh, we also publish books on current topics of interest to social workers that um, are sold not just to our members, but to anybody in the public. Uh, we also offer professional liability insurance in the United States, particularly if you are in independent practice. It's possible that you could be sued, much as a physician might be sued for practicing improperly. Uh, we provide uh, low-cost insurance for professional social workers um, who wish to protect themselves in that way. We also do a lot of legislative advocacy at both the state and the national level. Uh, Dr. Clark will speak about that shortly. In short, we try to do for so professional social workers what no one of us can do individually for ourselves, but if we join together collectively, we can really make things better for working social workers and gain better recognition within our country for the social work profession as a whole. Well, uh, uh, I would also ask uh, Dr. Clark to kindly explain to us about the profile of uh, the National Association of Professional Social Workers in the United States. The National Association of Social Workers, USA, or what we call NASW, began in 1955. Uh, we have a national office in Washington, D.C. We also have 56 chapter offices, as Dr. Ness has mentioned. In, we have one in every state. Uh, we have one that is for social workers who are from our country but working abroad. And we have them in our U.S. territories like Puerto Rico and Guam and the Virgin Islands. Uh, we have a dual mission statement. Dr. Nassis mentioned half of it. To protect and advance the profession of social work is one part of our mission statement. But the second part of our mission statement is social work advocacy for social justice. And I firmly believe that you can't be a social worker without also being an advocate for social justice. We are housed, as I said, our national office is housed in Washington, D.C. We have about 100 staff there, but we have about another 230 staff around the country. We are a big business, and I know that's hard sometimes for social workers to hear the word business, but you might be a not-for-profit business, but we still operate by business practices. We have to know finances. We have to be able to pay taxes. We do audits of all of our um, finances and programs. So we run it like a business, but we run it for the social work profession. We do have a press, as Dr. Anastas mentioned. We put out about 30 books a year and six journals. We have a legal defense fund, which is a fund that helps social workers when there's an issue that would affect the whole profession. For example, if we were looking at confidentiality and there was a challenge to whether or not social work had the right to confidential information with their clients, that's the kind of thing that we would actually spend money to be sure that that decision uh, is in the best interest of the profession. We do have an insurance company, and that sometimes surprises people, but because we do provide the malpractice insurance for the majority of social workers in our country. We, by having our own insurance company, we can provide it very cheaply. We have a foundation, and we work with other countries in a variety of ways through our foundation. So we are a, a rather large business, but our purpose, our major purpose, is to advance the field of social work. Well, you spoke about the foundation, you spoke about uh, the insurance company, uh, you are publishing uh, six journals and uh, 30 books in a year. It's all uh, uh, sounded very great. Uh, I am keen to know, uh, Dr. Clark, uh, what is your strategy for uh, fundraising? How do you manage all these uh, various activities of your uh, association? Well, we charge dues, social workers pay dues. Uh, 
it's uh, $190 a year for a professional social worker. We also have reduced dues for our students and for people unemployed, for people who are retired, but we do charge dues. And our dues make up about 48% of our funding. The other 52% comes in a variety of ways. As I said, selling our, our books and our journals, we certainly have a profit there. And our insurance company generates a profit that the dividends come back to the association. So about 52% of our budget is uh, from our, the business that we do. Well, uh, we, we are also interested in knowing, you said six journals. Mm -hmm. Now, is it on uh, various topics or, uh, or uh, region based or uh, what's the need for having six journals? <laughs> We ask ourselves that sometimes, uh, whether we need six, uh, but we, we do. Uh, we have the journal Social Work, which is, of course, one of the standard journals for the profession. And we have what we call our specialty practice journals, like children in schools or health and social work, uh, social work research. We have social work abstracts. Whether or not we need six journals, we have six. Uh, we just recently entered into a partnership with Oxford University Press to actually produce our journals. We still maintain control of them, but the production will be Oxford University Press because we'd like for our journals to have more of an international audience, and Oxford University Press will be able to do that. Okay, again, another question with regard to, you said uh, about uh, 30 books uh, uh, that you publish a year. Mm -hmm. Is it all based on uh, certain research or it's on the theory and the practical aspect of social work? Can you highlight on that? It's actually both. Uh, some of it is certainly based on theory and, 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 and practice. Uh, we do have some books that are sold on Amazon.com that are sort of for the... Um, average person who might be interested in reading books. So we have some popular books. We have books on ethics, books on trauma, uh, but we have a variety of books that we put out. The, the key is that they're all written by social workers. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Clerk. It was uh, interesting to listen uh, to the various activities of uh, the National Association. Now, Dr. Anastas, uh, can you uh, inform us about uh, a brief profile of the Council of Social Work Education and especially as a regulatory body or as a licensing body? Yes, the Council on Social Work Education is a separate organization from NASW, but we do collaborate on some issues. It's a much smaller organization composed of all of the schools and departments of social work that award MSW and BSW degrees in the United States. It also has individual members, typically faculty members and some student members. The most important function of the Council on Social Work Education is to accredit BSW and MSW programs. So they write and develop and revise national standards that any accredited school of social work must meet for either of those types of programs. This is important because if you want to get a license to practice social work in the state that you live in, you have to show that you're the licensing board that you graduated from one of these accredited schools of social work. You also have to show that to become an NASW member. In other words, you have to show that you have a proper professional degree in social work accredited by CSWE. Uh, and I should also mention that CSWE in its accreditation standards says that you must educate not just on the subject matter of social work but on social work ethics as well and they use NASW's code of ethics as the standard by which students must be educated and within which they must learn to practice. Um, I would also like to know uh, how do you do this uh, licensing or uh, issuing the registration? Do you have uh, separate bodies in each state or you have a national council? How do you operate that? It is a separate, it's a state-based matter for all of the professions, medicine, nursing, social work, and so forth. So NASW some years ago wrote model legislation that we thought would incorporate the proper standards for becoming licensed. Uh, some states license at the bachelor's level, BSW, uh, some do not. Uh, so each state may have slightly different requirements based on the politics that were going on in that state at the time that licensing came into play. Uh, so that is a state-based level. One of the challenges we have is it's not always easy should you get your license in one state to transfer that credential to another state, but that's something we hope to improve on over time. Okay. 
Well, uh, uh, Dr. Clerk, uh, uh, see, social work is a very popular uh, uh, profession in the United States. And uh, I do understand that there are several legislations uh, pertaining to social work. So can you highlight about uh, various legislations on social work in sure. the United States? We do quite a bit of, of legislative work in the United States. Social workers do in, in every state. Uh, we also have a social work bill that we've had introduced into the U.S. Congress called the Social Work Reinvestment Act. The idea behind that bill is that we'd like our government to uh, reinvest in social work, invest again. Years ago, 50 years ago, so, so, so the government was very uh, attuned to social work, and that isn't, hasn't been the case recently, so we'd like the government to reinvest. But we also go on to Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., and we work on behalf of legislation that we think is important. Uh, it might be um, gay marriage. It might be children's issues. There are many, many pieces of legislation that we work on. Because we're very activist in our country, uh, that is recognized by our legislators, and we can generate as much as 4,000 letters from social workers over a weekend if there's an issue that we think is very important. That carries some weight in our country. We also, though, and I think this is a, a very important thing for the profession is that we have social workers who are members of Congress. We have two U.S. Senators and five uh, members of the U.S. Congress who are social workers, very proud social workers, and they are very attuned to the kinds of legislation that we think is important, the social justice legisla legislation. And just this past year, we were able to get established in Congress what's called a social work caucus, which is a group right now of about 67 legislators who believe that the issues about our profession are so important that they've established a caucus to help us uh, go forward and make a change. <coughs> Uh, you spoke about uh, social workers who are also legislators. Uh, to what extent are they committed social workers or are they just politicians or bureaucrats? Uh, how do you assess their uh, kind of uh, well, we, uh, work profile? We actually assess that by how, how they introduce themselves. And if you go to, for example, Congressional member Edward Towns says very directly in all of his materials that he is first and foremost a social worker. Uh, People who are trained as social workers may have many different hats that they wear, but they are always a social worker, first and foremost. So they aren't just politicians as usual. They're there to make a difference the same way that we are. So when you want to get a particular legislation passed or enacted by the government, you said uh, you have the strategy of uh, a signature campaign. Mm -hmm. Apart from signature campaign, is there any other method like uh, lobbying with various legislators or uh, people who matter. One of the things we do is work in coalition with the other organizations that represent social workers in the United States, such as the Council on Social Work Education and several other. There's an organization of baccalaureate programs in social work, an organization of social work researchers, uh, and several other organizations. And we've formed a coalition that meets together twice a year and discusses what are the most important legislative priorities that we all as individual organizations need to unite and work on together. So that has also been powerful to be able to go to Capitol Hill, which is where our legislature meets, and to be able to say we represent not just one or two social work organizations, but several um, acting in coalition. Well, uh, from the uh, kind of a discussion that uh, uh, you presented, both of you presented now, I understand that it's a, it's a huge work that is involved yes. uh, by the professionals. So how much of time a professional has to spend uh, for taking up this kind of activities? Is it uh, that they have been exclusively employed for uh, uh, lobbying for uh, a particular cause or is it... Uh, 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 the kind of time that they give us individuals as volunteers. Maybe one is a, uh, a teacher of social work, another could be a practitioner. A practitioner. Uh, third one could be again, as you said about uh, legislators. So how do you uh, do that? Well, we do have people who are employed. 
uh, we have, as I said, 100 staff right in Washington, D.C., and they go to coalition meetings, they work with other groups that are social justice groups, and they do go up on the hill and they lobby on, on Capitol Hill. Uh, but we have a lot of social workers who help us in other ways. As I mentioned writing letters, sending letters to legislators or calling them. It really doesn't take a lot of time to be an advocate uh, legislatively. It just takes the interest and the know-how. And we think we've done a good job of training social workers in our country about the importance of advocacy. And so we find that it is not a huge amount of time on the individual part. What's important are the number of letters that people get. 4,000 letters is nothing to uh, uh, just sort of disregard when you're getting letters from 4,000 constituents. Uh, in our legislature, that carries a lot of weight. I should say we use electronic technology to make mm -hmm. that very easy for the user. Speaking as a member, I sign up to get emails that tell me that a letter is needed on a given issue, and they have in the memory bank of the computer who my legislators are, and a draft letter that I can customize or just send as is. So they really, that's part of what we use our staff for, is to make this advocacy work as easy for our members as possible. Now, we do, part of the dues supports the staff that do the work that the volunteers cannot do. And we do have some struggles getting enough volunteer time, particularly in this day and age when pressures in the social work workplace are very high in terms of productivity. But I represent, we do have a policy leadership on the part of volunteers. I am one of those. Um, I am fortunate to work in a university where my dean gives me some release time to do this work on behalf of the profession. But you're right, it can be a problem to get enough volunteers involved in some of the uh, oversight work that volunteers need to do. It would be a uh, kind of a real challenge to, uh, you know, to, to work uh, in a collaboration with the uh, 50 odd states in the United States uh, with the uh, social workers sp uh, spread across the states. Uh, so can you uh, highlight on some of the major challenges that the social workers and the social work association uh, face? Well, we are one association. We have units in every state, but we fund those units. So. It, it is a little easier than it might sound working together because we are uh, we are one organization. There are challenges, though, that I think uh, almost all associations face. One of the biggest ones, I think, which we think is a strength, but it's also a challenge, is our diversity. That social workers do so many different things, it's hard to say, here's one profession and people don't always know what social workers do so they know what a teacher does they know what a nurse does they know what a doctor does but they don't always know what a social worker does because we do so much so while diversity is our biggest strength it's also a challenge for us I also think it's very hard to remain relevant today things are changing at such a fast pace so we are constantly looking at ways to be relevant to our our members, our constituents. We have an aging of our population and an aging of our profession. In fact, social workers in our country are older than the average population. Part of that is because oftentimes social workers come to their profession later. Uh, and we're still 80% women. We need more men in the profession. And because we work with populations that are marginalized or disadvantaged, sometimes people see us as being marginalized or disadvantaged too. And I think the image of social work needs constant work. Well, I do not know whether uh, Dr. Anastas would like to add on to Dr. Claire. I think the challenge of relevance, um, and in many ways perhaps changing how we communicate with members and how we communicate with the world at large, about the profession um, needs to be constantly thought about in terms of new technologies. Uh, we do use now Twitter and Facebook, uh, which are ways that some we think some of the younger social workers prefer hearing about what's going on at NASW than through, let's say, a printed newsletter, which someone of my generation is pleased to receive. Uh, so we, we do try to keep communication methods up to date uh, but it is um, a challenge. And also, in terms of the states versus the national organization, our states are chapters, many of them are very active in providing conferences and continuing education activities that are less costly than a national conference for someone to attend. So while we sometimes do uh, national practice conferences, 
we also try not to do that to an extent that it competes with what people are doing at the state level because also getting together at a state level for a conference is a, is a way of professional networking and support that is more expensive to do face-to-face -face on a national level. Well, uh, Dr. Clark and uh, Dr. Anastas has already explained about the what, why, and how of uh, the National Association of uh, Professional Social Workers in the United States. I would like to ask uh, Dr. G. Mahesh to kindly tell us something about the kind of uh, social work associations that we have here in uh, India. Uh, we cannot compare what we have just heard about the association which is having a dynamic role which has been playing and uh, uh, in terms of although we have started uh, the first school of social work uh, in the year 1936 almost seven decades and we have progressed but not the way as any professional organization has to be uh, at present we have associations uh, specific to region regions and also as there are few national associations to name a few uh, we have the Indian Society of Professional Social Work which is one of the oldest associations of social work uh, social work in India it was initially uh, known as Indian Society of Psychiatric Social Work which was established in uh, Central Institute of Psychiatry in Ranchi but later on uh, in the year 1988, the membership got extended to all. Similarly, we have uh, schools of association of schools of social work, ASFI, which was uh, which was established in the year 1959 at Baroda, exclusively focusing on the membership of schools of social work. In that category, we have a national, uh, the only national association which is uh, which is prominent and which is also an initiative of School of Social Work is the National Association of Professional Social Workers of India. And we have various associations at the national level, at the regional level, but we are yet to achieve what we have just heard from the National Association of Social Work in USA uh, in terms of uh, standards and uh, maintaining standards and uh, quality. So. Uh, I would like to here mention one thing that the second review committee of UGC on social work recommended the setting of a national association of social work whereas uh, till now we haven't heard anything about that so this is one of our major limitations and uh, I hope in the near future we would gear up to establish one a dynamic association which will uh, take into consideration and also uh, take uh, the both professionals as well as the profession into in, in the forefront. Well, apart from the national associations which uh, Dr. Mahesh uh, shared with us, several states in the country are also uh, having their own associations uh, in uh, the southern state of Kerala. There is an association of social workers in uh, Kerala. Uh, in the state of Karnada, they have an association. In the state of Maharashtra, they have an association. So similarly, many states are coming out with associations. In fact, a uh, couple of years ago, when I was visiting the state of Imphal, where there is not a single school of social work, I could find an association of uh, social workers, and I was told that there are more than 100 members in that uh, association. Now, before we uh, 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 put the, uh, no, board to the audience, uh, I would also uh, keen to know from the uh, experts from the United States, uh, especially Dr. Clark and uh, Dr. Anastas, that we have a uh, couple of activists uh, who are directing the field, like uh, you might have very much uh, heard about uh, Anna Hazare's campaign in India against corruption, so much of followers for him. Uh, he is also called a social worker, although he is not a professionally trained social worker. We have another great lady, uh, Medha Padkar, who was in the Tata Institute of Social Sciences as an associate professor. She left uh, the teaching job and uh, she is working for uh, the tribal communities uh, who are being displaced because of uh, building up of uh, mega dams. Now, in the United States, do you have such uh, uh, activists from among the professionals who are taking up any particular cause and uh, which turns up into a kind of a national movement. Uh, we are just uh, keen to know about it. 
Well, we have many social workers, I think, that have professional causes in the United States. One of the causes that we're looking at right now is military social work. We're looking at the issues of uh, servicemen and women who are coming home from the wars. We don't believe that we have enough services available for all the returning veterans and, and servicemen. So there are social workers that are working in that area. There are social workers that work on disasters, uh, disaster preparedness, trying to be certain that we are in the forefront of looking at disasters. Uh, I think there are social workers, remember there are over 600,000 social workers, professionally trained social workers in the United States practicing today. So we cover many bases. I, I think it's important to just take a moment and think what it would be like in our world today if there were no social workers. If social work as a profession ended today, what would our world look like? It would be a much less hospitable world. Uh, who would care about the people that are marginalized and disadvantaged if not for the profession? So we are very, very proud to represent the profession of social work. We call it the profession of hope, and I think that's really what we do. So there are social workers everywhere in the, in the world that are working on behalf of, to make life better for uh, the people that they know and love. Well, I am keen to get some uh, 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 questions or interactions or observations or comments from uh, the audience. Uh, would uh, any of you like to... And I did notice that you go off into the prisons. We have about 30% of our prisons have... Ha the members of our prisons have mental illness. And some social workers are trying to get those more diver diverted into being treated for their mental illness rather than being incarcerated. And I know your professor here was saying that you do do that, and we applaud you for that. And I'd like you, any comment you have on how to treat mental, men, mental illness, psychiatric problems here, I'd appreciate hearing. Well, uh, uh, in India, we do have a couple of uh, specialized uh, centers uh, to train people in psychiatric social work. One is located in the state of uh, Karnataka in Bangalore. Nimans, which is very well known across the globe. We also have another center in Ranchi. And then some of the schools of social work do have specialization in uh, medical and psychiatric social work. But it may not be as a very strong component in their training program. <coughs> they have a couple of uh, uh, theory papers which are focusing on uh, the what, why, and how of uh, psychiatric social work. However, they do have a very strong practice component. That's what we have. I might just add that of our members in the United States, our NASW members, the single most common area of focus when we ask them in our member surveys is mental health work. Well, one of the, uh, the you know, reasons for having less uh, uh, professionals or the country has noted felt the need for uh, training mental health professionals is as I um, uh, told in our interaction earlier that about 70% of our people live in the villages. India is still uh, 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 society, a traditional society. Uh, so a lot of uh, emotional support comes from in the uh, immediate relatives of uh, the client, in the parents or brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, the kith and kin that are uh, you know, uh, within the family circle. So most uh, practically every teacher is a counselor, every parent is a counselor, every religious teacher becomes a counselor in the Indian context. So from that point of view, again, uh, if you uh, talk about uh, the role of a social worker in India, most people are unaware. Most educated people, in fact, are unaware about who is a social worker and what are their roles, what are they supposed to be doing. Yeah, I have a one simple question uh, to respect to delegates. Uh, in 2001, I got uh, one definition of social work uh, by uh, NSSW, uh, IFSW and uh, ISSW. That's very uh, elaborated. Uh, it is given social justice, talk about uh, empowerment and liberty and human rights. Uh, as we know, the world is uh, moving towards uh, and uh, side by side, we are developing so much problems in you know, society now. And social work, we have one six methods. Uh, uh, that we are dealing with the problems uh, for the beginning of the, uh, the, the existence of social work. Do you feel, uh, or uh, sometimes I feel, 
uh, we should have more uh, methods in social work not only sex uh, because uh, problem has varied from the region to region do you sometimes feel the uh, feeling comes to mind we should have may, may have uh, more uh, one two more methods in social work so that we can uh, deal with the problems uh, bad problems uh, you're saying areas. different practice more practice methods yeah practice methods <coughs> Well, I agree with you that I'm glad you brought up IFSW and IASSW, the International Association of Schools of Social Work. NASW is a member of IFSW, and again, there are very wonderful um, joint meetings once every two years internationally to really look at social work from a global perspective. One of the things we've been challenged with in social work education in the United States is to become more global in how we teach, that we tend to teach a very US-centric uh, way of doing things. And of course, it's important to know how to function in your own governmental system, in your own healthcare financing system. But we also are aware that it's a very mobile world. Um, I live in New York City, which is a gateway city. There are hundreds of languages spoken in the public schools in New York, and therefore if a social worker is being educated, not just in New York, but probably in any part of the United States today, they need to have the expertise to work with many different kinds of groups. I tend to be one who believes that many of the principles that underlie social work methods, even if they're different, um, what some people call the common factors may be the most important. That is the valuing of relationships, the ability to build relationships with a variety of people, the ability to connect people wherever you encounter them with whatever formal and informal resources there are in their social networks, in their communities. Um, I'm not sure that we need more in terms of specialization so much as making sure that in whatever sector of society we're trying to make a difference, that we adhere to those <coughs> fundamental principles of social work practice. Uh, I think Dr. Glass, you spoke about the continuing education. Can you just clarify for the benefit of our people, what do you mean by continuing education as far as uh, uh, social workers are concerned, and how do you go about? Well, most of our licensing laws that Dr. Nass has talked about are done state by state. Uh, I should mention, licensing laws are there for consumer protection. Sometimes people get that confused, and they think that we're licensed so that we can advance the profession. The licensing laws in our country are really about protecting the consumers that we work with. Uh, in order, though, to get licensed, almost always you are required by that license to have so many units of continuing education. That means that you will stay current in your practice. You will have so many units every year of ethical training. Uh, we at NASW do provide continuing education, as do most of our universities. Once you've finished your formal education, you do need to stay current. Things don't remain unchanged. So we, we talk about the continuing education uh, programs that we put out there and are available. We also, in, at NASW, though, set the standards for practice. Now, we talked about CSWE, the Council on Social Work Education, setting the accreditation standards. But we set the standards for practice in different situations in different areas so that we know what we would expect a social worker to do in those areas. So continuing education, staying current in your field, uh, staying current in the profession is very important in our country. I wanted to ask, like, I had taken membership of General Social Care Council England. And because I, uh, but for getting an employment, it was necessity there. So I wanted to know that in uh, US also, is it uh, required that uh, unless and until we get a membership of NASW, one cannot be employed? Or is it uh, just uh, to for the professional recognition? So I just well, I think in our country, for many forms of social work employment, it would be the license in your state that might, uh, that might be most influential in getting certain kinds of jobs especially if they're financed through our health insurance system. Um, I do think for most professional resumes, it's a plus factor to list that you're a member <coughs> of the professional association. It wouldn't be required to get a job, but if somebody was reading your resume carefully and they saw you were a member of the professional association, <coughs> it should tell them that you adhere to this code of ethics, that you have access to practice standards for different areas of specialty. 
So it wouldn't be a requirement, but we would like to think that it would be something that would work in your favor. Well, I think uh, during the last uh, 44 minutes, we are talking about uh, the National Association of uh, uh, Social Workers in the United States. Uh, also, we have discussed about, uh, in brief, about the associations in India. We covered a wide range of uh, areas when we discussed about the uh, National Association, especially about the need for uh, the National Association, the Council on uh, Social Work Education, then uh, so, uh, legislations pertaining to social work, particularly in the United States, and the kind of challenges that the National Association of uh, Social Workers face. And uh, it was uh, really uh, highly informative and educative, and I'm sure uh, this particular discussion will uh, uh, give uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, motivation to many social work students as well as practitioners and teachers in India to uh, strive for getting a national association, a national council, uh, which will have the approval of the government of India. Thank you uh, one and all for joining us in this uh, uh, discussion and deliberation this afternoon.